right. Uh, everybody, you can go ahead and stand up and have a nice festive worship this morning. If you know the words, sing along.
thou our sad division cease and be thyself our king
Does that help? Yeah. All right. Beautiful, guys. There's something about the simplicity. Y'all can sit down. There's something about the simplicity of um, just guitars. Um, you know, uh, we, we gave Bob and Cynthia the weekend off. <laughs> Hallelujah. They, they went traveling somewhere. Maybe they went and got a lope. Did they a lope that we don't know about? Did, did Bob and Cynthia lope? Did they a lope and get married or something this weekend? You don't know? Okay. The drum machine's called Bob and the, uh, yeah. yeah. Dick's totally left out in the dark out there. Yeah, they, shot, they just ran off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, my brother, when it came time for him to get married, um, back in that day, uh, in North Carolina, you had to have a blood test to get married. And he hated needles. He hated the sight of blood. I mean, literally, if he saw the sight of blood, he would just. <laughs> and, um, and so they, in South Carolina didn't require blood test. So instead of get, going, going through the wedding and stuff, they just all of a sudden took off one weekend, went south of the border and got married because he wouldn't have to get the blood test. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, people do stuff, don't they? Hallelujah. We're so glad to see you today. Don't forget, uh, this uh, next Sunday, we're virtual only. We will not be meeting uh, in person. Uh, there is no Wednesday night service for the next two weeks. So be, you know, be aware of that. And, um, you know, we're, um, it's, um, it's a time when we, we try to refresh um, outside of regular schedules and, you know, spend some time with family. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> I know for a lot of the church world, that, you know, certain days are the high holy days, 
But for us, every day is a high holy day. You know, every day is in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. So um, we just kind of take a different approach. We think it's important for you to spend time with family and, um, you know, minister to your family and be, be light. And, if, and when there's darkness, be your light in the darkness with your families and with your friends that you spend time with. So uh, praise the Lord. And uh, we, we, will, we will see you in person two weeks from today. We'll see you online next Sunday, okay, at 1030. Okay, we will be at 1030 in the morning next Sunday morning. <clears throat> Hallelujah. All right. And as we're heading into the end of the year, you know, uh, don't forget your uh, any extra contributions to the church that you need to make for your tax write-offs. I mean, we want to support the kingdom of God, but if you need an extra tax write-off, our building fund is looking for you. Hallelujah. It's saying, say, give us, we can get into our building. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. But, uh, you know, that's coming up. So anything given, you know, before the 31st counts in this year. So let's, uh, you know, if, if you need that, go ahead and do that. Uh, praise the Lord. Um, don't forget you can give through Square Cash or um, through um, PayPal. And, um, and of course, you can mail checks. But uh, um, I think if you're just a check person, you just don't do it any other way. I got, I got you. I feel you. Hallelujah. And, um, and if, you, if you got cash, you know, we actually take cash. We, very, we see very little of it these days. We just don't see a lot of cash anymore. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, uh, we're so happy to have you. And let's go ahead and um, pray over the offering. If you need an offering envelope, raise your hand. Ushers will be glad to assist you. This is the general tithe and offering of the local church. If you're giving to the building fund, just mark that um, on your envelope or on your check <clears throat> that you're giving to the building fund and, and or missions with some, one of our other giving areas. Um, you can so into those things. Make sure you mark that, and so we take care of uh, placing that in the right place. Hallelujah. All right. You know, Jesus the, uh, said, Give, and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. Praise God. We thank God for his word. We thank God that, as he said, as we, as we obey and act on the word of God, that his word will work for us. Can you say Amen. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, we speak over the people's lives. Thank you as they, sow, as they sow seed and tithe into the kingdom of God. We thank you, dear Father, that heaven's windows are opened unto them, and you pour out blessings they don't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Brother Joe, and receive that. You know, it wasn't much, uh, it was 13 months ago um, that we... Uh, well, coming up in, in, at the end of this year, this is uh, 2020, at the end of 2018, y'all remember, uh, the, I was watching the Carolina Hurricanes play hockey and uh, after Christmas, and uh, I was just sitting there, and the Lord asked me a question. He said, how much debt are you in the church? I don't know. And just, you know, I went back to watching the game. He said, find out. I took, I took that as a, as a um, kind of an emphatic, I better do something. So I got up with the middle of my, my hockey game. Yeah, I mean, you know, <clears throat> went over and got all the stuff out and pulled everything out and added it all up. And went, uh, well, uh, we're $35,580 in debt. I'm thinking, well, okay, I've told you what you, what you wanted to know. And of course, he knew it. I'm not, I'm not sure what's going on. And, um, and then the Lord, you know, said, do this, and in 18 months, you'll be out of debt as a church. And um, so <clears throat> that plan was we came to the church on the first Sunday of, of the new year, presented it, and asked people to give an extra, you know, uh, $1,000 that year. You know, actually, you know, actually, people give up to $100 a month that year. Um, uh, for um, a 12-month commitment. And um, we just needed X number of people in the church to do that and um, continue paying what we were paying already and, and so forth. And we'd be out of debt in, in uh, uh, June of 2020. And y'all all, all know that um, as this thing began and we started out, we, we, um, we had a little thermometer we would put up on the, the screen every, every week and we would, and, and, and um, we watched that 35580 plus the interest added to it during the year 
of three thousand, I think three thousand eight hundred dollars. By the time we ended up paying it off, and in, a, and in ten and a half months we paid it off. And I, I'm sitting here today, another thirteen months later, and we have money in the bank. We don't have, um, you know, debt. We have money in the bank. We're debt free. And have been, <coughs> and have watched increase come into us and position us. <coughs> so we're believing. Did y'all put the, did you put the little picture of the thermometer up there? The payoff thermometer? We blew the top off on the, uh, and have, we had one made with the top being blown off and debt free and smoke coming out <coughs> last November. And uh, it was just an exciting event. But now we operate, we're operating in a, positive cash flow with no debt. It's kind of exciting. Hallelujah. And uh, God's give, giving us position so we can move into our own place again and have our own place in Jesus' name. All righty. Well, um, we don't have anybody that's got a clean, fresh bottle of water, do you? All right. <coughs> that would be a blessing. Hallelujah. So, we, yeah, guys, y'all over there. I'm not sure what she's doing today, but she's got something planned, as usual. My wife loves the kids. Um, she will never give up teaching the kids. Uh, she's done it the entire time we've been here. <coughs> uh, did it in the church where we were before. Hallelujah. Um, when we, before we came here to pastor, we, uh, we worked in a church as an assistant pastor and, you know, working there. And uh, she worked in, with the children. And uh, she has no plans on quitting. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, open your Bibles, if you will. We're continuing. Um, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. And forget not all of his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities and healeth all thy diseases. Hallelujah. And so we're um, we've been continuing with the um, fact that God's will is to heal us. And now, I guess um, there are... Um, Bible facts that have been established, and um, when we say I'm certain ways, you know, you'll hear people teaching, you know, well, God's gone, done all he's ever going to do about saving you, okay? And, and there's truth in that. I, I get that. And, um, but it hasn't become a reality until we receive it by faith. So, okay? So, um, God's done all he's going to do about healing you. He's not going to come and heal you again or, or, or you know, um, bring a, a new thing of healing on the earth, Jesus has already borne your sicknesses. <coughs> but it's not a reality until you receive it. In the same way that you don't, you, you have to receive the new birth or receive salvation to be born again, you must receive healing. And the same way, by faith. It has to be received by faith. Can you say amen? So we know it's God's will for people to be healed because he's already made provision for them, for their help and for their healing. He's already in one, just like in one sense of it, everybody's already been granted salvation. If you reject it and don't receive it, you don't get saved. Um, actually, this, this is um, an interesting thing. Now, we used to sing a song in my Pentecostal church. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. <clears throat> that is so inaccurate. I said, that is so inaccurate. But I get it. You know the song, but we got saved. I received Jesus. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. And we're saying, you know, we're, we're so excited about the fact we got born again. 
Uh, but sometimes we, we come up with songs that come out of our feelings that aren't biblically accurate. You see, when, when you got born again, your name was already written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hello? Well, what makes you say that? Have you not read in the book of Revelation where it says whosoever name was not blotted out of the Lamb's Book of Life? You see, when Jesus went to the cross, he paid the price for all, and everybody's name got put in the book. <clears throat> Those who reject and die without Christ get blotted out. See, God's already done. All you got to do is receive. The work's already been accomplished. All you have to do is receive. And when you receive, your name doesn't get written down. You just appropriate what's already there. It's when you reject it and reject Christ that it gets blotted out and it's, it doesn't get applied to your life. Now, healing was purchased, as we have already established, by the same sacrifice that is Jesus Christ at the cross in his death, burial, and resurrection, the redemptive work of Christ. Healing has already been purchased for you. Notice, as we, when we were quoting those passages of Scripture from Isaiah 50, um, 53 and from uh, Matthew 8 and from 1 Peter 2. Uh, thank you. Now the war is coming out of the woodwork. You guys are awesome. <laughs> now we can't go into the promised land because we struck the rock twice. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, but notice the first that Isaiah 53 5 says, By whose stripes we are healed. Prophecy of an coming event. Making reference to the suffering servant. Peter, in retrospect, establishes by whose stripes we were healed. Now, see, we, you can't approach God, oh, God, heal me. We got it wrong. We're taking it wrong. You're wanting him to come do something, and you're waiting for him to come do something that he's already done. Hello? It's not a matter of him healing you. It's a matter of you receiving what he's already done. It's not a matter of him saving you. It's a matter of you receiving what he's already done. See the difference? See, we keep waiting for this event to take place whether it was salvation or healing a lot of times. You know, Lord, save me. You know, he's already done it. Just receive what he's already done. Lord, heal me. You're wanting him to come and do again what he's already done. Instead of I'm receiving what's already been procured. Jesus doesn't need to, you know, by his stripes ye were healed. Were is past tense. Amen? I said were is past tense. Hello? Glory to God. See, it's the prayer of faith. What, is, what does faith do? Faith is an active, is an action, but faith is a receiver. It is an active receiver. It receives what God has already promised. 
<coughs> or made provision for. Hello. Now see it, we don't have a promise like that uh, that already God's already prospered us because the Bible tells us to, you know, to give and it shall be given. The, the law of seed time and harvest and far as finances is all through the New Testament as well as the old. There are things we do. Hello? And God says he'll do this in response to that. But salvation of uh, the spirit and salvation of the body, healing for the body, aren't like that. You don't earn your healing. Hello? Well, what about laying hands on the sick and getting them healed by, by praying for people? <clears throat> the anointing is a means of, de of delivery to make it easier for people to receive. It's not that the healing anointed healing healed them. Jesus already healed them. It was a delivery mechanism. mechanism. I kind of did something weird with that syllable, didn't I? <laughs> mechanism. <laughs> and we start talking like the Hagens, obstacles. obstacles. Obstacles and obstacles, yeah. Got to love Brother Hagen and Pastor Hagen. And that, that Texas colloquial expressions and, and some, some of their colloquials from Texas. Um, anyway, the way they said some stuff. <laughs> My sister in law just said Frank still runs from needles when he sees him coming towards him. <laughs> That's my brother. My brother's Frank. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the healing anointing, you see, I heard Mark, Mark Z shared one time when he was in our church with us a number of years ago. And he said, you know, 80% faith and 20% anointing, you got 100%. 80% <coughs> anointing and 20% faith, you got 100%. When there's a healing anointing in manifestation, depending on the strength of it, people are receiving because that, that vehicle to deliver what's already been made available hooks up with wherever they are, their faith level. If it's, if it's greater between the two of them is, is 100%, they're receiving. Hello. So you get gifts of healings or manifestations of that. And uh, <clears throat> those anointings can come in various means and various levels different ways, but they're, they're a vehicle to deliver what God's already provided. Whereas many times people's faith isn't there, or something's standing in the way, and the, in, in their mind is getting involved, or, you know, unbelief is getting involved, and suddenly the anointing is in manifestation, and it's delivered, it's, it's, it, and people will, will step in and receive in that moment. Hallelujah. But they're receiving what was already accomplished. Already provided. Already available. Can you say glory to God? So some of our thinking along these lines just needs to be adjusted a little bit. God's, when, when sickness is in your body, and you, and you go and you pray and you ask the Lord <clears throat> and you pray in accordance with the Word of God and say, I believe that I receive my healing. See, now if you're going to the Lord and say, Lord, heal me. Now you're waiting for the event. Hello? You're waiting for the event to take place. <laughs> Yet the Word of God says you already were healed. Amen? You already were. Well, if you, if you were, you is. Somebody say amen. 
Amen. If you were, you is. Isn't that right? <laughs> Glory to God. Um, if you was healed, you is healed. <coughs> and um, started tickling here. Because it's already an accomplished fact. Because salvation has already been procured. Lord, save me if it be your will. Well, <clears throat> God's not willing that any should perish, but all come to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. We said earlier, your name's already in the Lamb's Book of Life. It gets blotted out. The sinners who reject Christ and die in their sin get blotted out. I have to think about that through all eternity. To suffer in torment, to suffer in hell, to suffer with, the, with Satan and the fallen angels and, and the rebellious against God. All that time through eternity, there's a book called the Lamb's Book of Life that your names have blotted out of that was in. And all you had to do was receive. Didn't need for God to come down and save you. Salvation was already procured. Don't need for God to come heal you. You just receive what he's already procured. Amen. So, do, so, so is there any, <clears throat> excuse me, any reason not to lay hands on the sick? No, absolutely we should. The Bible tells us to lay hands on the sick. God wants to use every method and means available to get people to where they can receive. I'll tell you, there's, um, we preach these things and we encourage, you know, we, we want things to be where there's, a, there's healing anointings or the, the atmosphere for God to work in. Sister Wilkerson prophesied a number of years ago on a, um, I had gotten a hold of the old tape series and she, was, she began to prophesy. And um, uh, if you've ever never heard Sister Wilkerson, um, well, how many of you have ever heard of Billy Brown? Well, that's it. She sounds just like Sister Wilkerson because that's who she sat under. Um, Sister Wilkerson was like her spiritual mother. And, um, and so when, you, when, when, when Billy Brim starts going, end of the glory, I'm thinking, there's Sister Wilkerson because <laughs> that's how Sister Wilkerson sounded. Um, oh, what a sweet, precious woman of God. Hallelujah. And, um, and anyway, um, she... Um, she was prophesying on this tape about atmosphere. She says, atmosphere calleth me. Whether for good or for evil, it calleth me. And that, that's, that, 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 that phrase, and that, just that one prophecy, and I can't find that tape that I've looked, and I can't, you know, it's one of those things you listened to and you heard and you thought, man, that's awesome. And then you, for some reason, it got misplaced or whatever. You've never been able to find it again. But that's always stuck with me. Because you see, atmosphere calls God. Now listen, you know, we got a lot of people who want to preach, and, when, and there is a justifiable side to it, you know, that, that God's judgment comes on with the atmosphere of evil and so forth. But in the church, the atmosphere that should be calling God is the atmosphere of good, an atmosphere by which the Spirit of God can manifest, where the anointing of God is available and manifest in a way that it's easy for people to receive what God's already provided. So that we'll begin to lay hands on the sick or give altar calls and invite people to come to Jesus. The atmosphere is charged in a way that makes it easy to receive from God. <clears throat> Amen. So, the, the Word is all it has to be preached. Why? Because the Word and the Spirit agree. You've got to have the Word preached. There's no basis for faith without it. Oh, you're here. You're going home. Without the preaching of the Word, there is no basis of faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Yet, the working of the Holy Ghost, the anointing, 
coinciding. And this is where we in the church need to be uh, aware of the necessity for us to step into higher places in God. And this is where the enemy came in and de deceived the church for some time. We became more about, uh, you know, an, an experience. Now, listen, I believe in the experience with God. We're, we're more into the worship experience, light shows, fog shows, you know, all this stuff, and, and not the presence of God. And so you... Dad Hagen warned us about this. 33 years ago, in 1987, with the uh, camp meeting, Plans, Purposes, and Pursuits, and then the book that came out of that, where the Spirit of God called him up into heaven and said, my people have substituted brass for gold. And then he said, Clapping's neither praise nor worship. And one, one of the popular worship magazines of the day called, they called him a false prophet. Well, clapping is neither praise nor worship. He says it's a form of, of, of human adoration. It's not spiritual. Hello. Didn't say it was wrong. It's, just neither, it's neither praise nor worship. <clears throat> Hello. And he warned, he was, the, the, the Lord was trying to bring us out of, so what do you mean? So, well, brass is, is similar in, in, in appearance to gold. Polished, shiny, golden, but it's not gold. One, the, one's a way better conductor than the other. And um, we, we moved into a season where our church services were more based on people having some type of sensory experience than encounters with God. Well, what's the problem with that? It puts butts in the seats. Yeah, and money in the coffers. I get it. Because there's your bottom line. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Y'all mighty quiet out there. I'm waiting for the first church of the frozen chosen or something. Hello. The reason it's so important that the atmosphere be pure with gold and not brass is because the needs of the people need to be met. And we don't want to fake them out. Now, hello. You don't want to fake them out where they come in and think they got something because they got emotionally stirred and they missed the encounter with the glory. Hello. Now, how many of you have ever had goosebumps before? Have you ever watched a movie and, and something you know, kind of you know, moved you emotionally? You got kind of chills or whatever. But you know what? That's not the same thing as when you're in a church service and the anointing of God shows up. Now, see, we can move people emotionally. <clears throat> I remember I was, in a, I was actually in a service in Tulsa when Sister Wilkerson was there, Brother Hagen had, had, um, uh, had to go somewhere. No, 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 no. It was a night that he was there. It was Winter Bible Seminar. Well, we, we didn't call it Winter Bible Seminar back then. It was, um, it was Prayer Seminar. We had two. We had Holy Spirit Seminar and Prayer Seminar. They eventually combined them into Winter Bible. Because he said, you know, they could cover both the Holy Spirit or prayer in one and call it Bible Seminar. But back in that, when I was in school, it was, we had two. We had Winter Bible now, we had prayer and we had Holy Spirit seminar. We, this was prayer seminar, and it went three weeks. And um, Brother Hagen, we were all up at the front, and one night we we're all up at the altar, you know, in the um, what's now Rooker Memorial Auditorium, and um, we we're all down there around the front. 
it held about 2,500 people in that building back then. Um, and uh, Brother Hagen's up there. And Sister Wilkerson was there in the building, in the meeting. And um, Brother Hagen's just kind of praying. And he just he stopped and said, Sister Wilkerson, the Lord wants to use you. <clears throat> and what seemed like an eternity, nothing happened. See, when you walk in the Spirit, you're not uptight about time. That's what I've, I've been around people of the Spirit. They don't, they don't get uptight about things. And so we just sat there, and we sat there, and we sat there. I mean, we're just waiting, waiting for Sister Wilkerson to wake. And then the prophet just said, God wants to use you, the prophetess. And finally, somebody just couldn't take it anymore. And uh, they just started blurting out in tongues real loud. And Brother Hagin said, stop that. Hold it. My sister Wilkerson, go ahead when you're ready. And about another 30 seconds, and then she, she opened her mouth. And she began to pro And I'm telling you, you talk about the atmosphere being charged like that. She began to speak. And I mean, the hair on the back of my neck stood up. I mean, you could sense the presence of God and just dripping out of the words she was speaking. Oh, my. That wasn't emotionally charged. That wasn't emotionally charged. The, the anointing of God. And, and people receive in those places. Which is why it's important we in the church understand that when we come together and we begin to bring people in and we're, we're, we're bringing them in, we want to be in tune with the Spirit of God because we want to set an atmosphere. Not just so that man can deliver the Bible message of the day, you know, and everybody can talk about the great accolades of his expository and auditory and, you know, whatever kind of Tory um, dissection of the scriptures and, you know, and, it would, and everybody just pat him on the back about how great a teacher you are. It doesn't matter how great a teacher you are if you walk out the door and they hadn't changed people. That if they haven't had the encounter they need for transformation, to receive, to grow, to get <coughs> out of God what he has for them. Amen. And so, Kevin and Durant were with us um, a number of years ago, and um, they had not long been come out of a, out of a, a, a Benny Hinn meeting in Georgia at, at the Coliseum there in Atlanta. Now, I'm not sure. I don't think it's a new one. I think it's the old, the old Coliseum. And uh, they were in the meeting. And um, can I tell you why so many people get healed in some of these meetings? The anointing, the vehicle for delivery, making it easier to receive, people get faith, gets released in the anointing. Well, if you've ever been in Atlanta, the, um, the I, whatever it is, I'm not sure if it's I-20 or the belt, whatever the belt line is around Atlanta, um, it's classified and often it's, it's two things. It's either qualifying heats for Talladega Motor Speedway or it's the world's biggest parking lot, depending on what time of the day you're on it. Okay? I've been in it in both cases. All right? I mean, you're, you, you, we got stuck over on the inside lane one time, and I'm in a minivan with the family. We're doing 110, and I can't, and I got people riding up my backside. And I'm trying to figure out how can I get out of this lane? Okay? And um, then I've been there where you're like, we're moving at 10 miles an hour, and I'm trying to figure out how can I get out of this lane? Well, they're, you know, Benny, they're at the Benny Hinn meeting. They're there. And uh, they come out, and, you know, the service is supposed to start. Well, well, Benny Hinn's not there. 
And they finally say, look, he's stuck on the belt line. Well, everybody in Atlanta knew what that meant. We don't know what time he's going to get here. And uh, they said, so we did, they just sat there and sat there. And finally, you know, charismatics, they just, they just, they just got to do something. You know? And uh, so somebody, some, some little group somewhere started singing some worship course. And then it kind of began to spread. And the next thing you know, the whole place is singing them. You know? And when that one died out, they started another one. They, and, um, you know, they had done that for you know, 30 or 40 minutes, just sitting there singing, worshiping. And all of a sudden, the healing evangelist isn't there yet. People start standing up in the building screaming in different parts, I just got healed! I, and they start popping up like popcorn all over the building. People screaming that they had just been healed. What happened? The anointing doesn't have to wait for the evangelist to show up. The atmosphere got created. The delivery vehicle was manifest, and people just connected to it. And they started receiving. Amen. Receiving what God had already provided for them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, I've watched this. <clears throat> um, Brother Hagin would... Um, one of the things he told the Lord one time, he, he pushed his body one time too far. It almost cost him his life. And he said, I will never, I'll never do that again. And he could be in the middle of a healing line with a thousand people there. And if he got to a certain point and he physically said that was it, he would stop. He said, I told the Lord I'd never do it again. I'd never, I would never press beyond that again. Now, what he, what he, what he began to do was um, he would call, a lot of times he would call you know, people from from the Raymond Singers of Band or whatever, laid his hand in their hand and had them go start ministering to people. And I've watched people instantly turn off because it wasn't Brother Hagen laying hands on them. I've, I've said, you, you, could feel, you could feel it turn off. But see, they missed it. He put the hands of the anointing, that anointing was still there. It was transferable. Hello. Had they just continued to keep their faith in the anointing, they could have received. Actually, I've seen people turn around and walk out of the line. Hello. Saw it happen with my own eyes. Glory to, well, not glory to God. Bless the darling hearts and stupid heads, as Dad would say. <clears throat> so, this anointing is so important that we recognize what's happening. It's not that God came down with healing and suddenly healed people. It was the vehicle delivered what was already made available. Hello? Was it making it new? Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. <clears throat> so we, we want to endeavor going into the new year. Um, there are some things that we as a church, and they haven't let go of. It's just been well, kind of a weird season for a while. But that's, that's who we are is not all we're walking in. Hello. My gifts and callings are not in full manifestation. Some of, you, some of you haven't even seen them um, the way, way some of you have. Um, but that's, that's, that's um, <clears throat> there's a new day coming and the restoration of things. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise be to God. So, um, healing we're going to leave right here with this today. Has already been purchased for you. So now it's a matter of receiving from God what he's already procured through Jesus Christ. Can you say amen?
whether fully by faith, fully by the anointing, or a mixture of the two. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you say glory be to God? Hallelujah. Um, since we won't see you in person again before Christmas, obviously, Janie, Janie and I bless you. We say uh, have a blessed and wonderful Christmas. We love you. Enjoy your chocolate. If you weren't here today, I'll enjoy your chocolate. Actually, we'll, we'll, um, we'll save it for you when you get back after Christmas. We'll have it for you and we'll get it to you. Maybe if we don't eat it all during Christmas. Because, you know, once, once we start diving into it, sometimes it just gets so good we can't take it. Hallelujah. All right. <coughs> so from our church family to you and to your household, we may have a blessed, prosperous, and Merry Christmas. We love you. God bless you. And uh, until we meet again, have a, have a wonderful Christmas. Happy New Year. And we'll see you next time. Faith and Victory Church. Amen. God bless you.